So Google just dropped a ton of insane news, starting with their new Gemini 2.0 flash model, which is now available for all users and has brand new multimodal capabilities along with tool use. This new foundational model has paved the way for significant advancements in Google's research, leading to multimodal AI agents that can not only perceive the world and converse with you in real time, but that can also understand your computer screen and actually get things done for you. Here's a demo showcasing just how truly advanced their systems have become. My introduction to Astra was this Sunday morning, which was my birthday. Went out for breakfast, got my banana pancakes, came back, and I started exploring the app. Right, day one, loading up Google's DeepMind Project Astro. I remember the first thing that we did was I pointed it at this marathon training plan for LA in 2025 that I printed out. It looks like it's a schedule for the Los Angeles Marathon. It shows the type of workout and times planned for the month before the race. It was able to just tell me about the plan, synthesizing information right before my own eyes. This morning I am doing the spider route. I am going to bring some gels. Since you plan to run 10 miles, you might need about three to four blocks cubes during your run. What I've been trying to do throughout the course of this week is use an app like an assistant. I have this like delightful voice being all cheery and supportive. The week is busy, but you're on your way now. How can I make your drive better, Josh? Do you need anything from me, like music suggestions? One of the things I find pretty fascinating about Astro is that it can remember what we talked about before. Wait. Do you remember what we made with celery last time? Yes, we added a bit of ginger to it last time, didn't we? How much ginger do you think we should use from this? For eight cups of juice, a one inch piece of that ginger should do the trick. I don't have a ruler on me. Do you think this is about an inch? Yes, that looks like about an inch to me. So that was Google's Project Astra, which they've demoed before in the past, but it has gotten some major upgrades like longer memory, for example, which is something we got a glimpse of in that demo. It also has the ability to converse in more languages, use tools like Google Search, Lens, and Maps. And the latency is also much better. Now, unfortunately, Project Astra is currently not available, and there is no set release date for it yet, but they're expanding their trusted tester program and adding glasses support, and are going to continue to improve it based on feedback. So as I mentioned, the new Gemini 2.0 Flash has also led to some major advancements with Google's agentic AI. Here they present Project Mariner, agents that can help you accomplish complex tasks. Today I want to tell you about Project Mariner. It's a research prototype exploring the future of human agent interaction and is built on Gemini 2.0. Like with all new technology, it's important for us to build this responsibly, which is why we're starting small. We'll be getting feedback from a group of trusted testers and using their experiences to really shape how Project Mariner evolves. Let me show you how it works. So Project Mariner works in the browser as an experimental Chrome extension. I'm going to start by entering a prompt. Here, I have a list of outdoor companies listed in Google Sheets, and I want to find their contact information. So I'll ask the agent to take this list of companies, then find their websites and look up a contact email I can use to reach them. This is a simplified example of a tedious multi-step task that someone could encounter at work. Now. The agent has read the Google Sheet and knows the company names. It then starts by searching Google for benchmark climbing. And now it's going to click into the website. You can see how this research prototype only works in your active tab. It doesn't work in the background. Once it finds the email address, it remembers it and moves on to the next company. At any point in this process, you can stop the agent or hit pause. What's cool is that you can actually see the agent's reasoning in the user interface so that you can better understand what it is doing. And it will do the same thing for the next two companies, navigating your browser, clicking links, scrolling, and recording information as it goes. You're seeing an early stage research prototype, so we sped this up for demo purposes. We're working with trusted testers to make it faster and smoother and it's so important to keep a human in the loop. After the fourth website, the agent has completed its task, 
listing out the email addresses for me to use. And there you have it. We're really just scratching the surface of what's possible when you bring agentic AI to computers. And we're really excited to see where this goes next. That was pretty crazy. The AI agent was able to navigate through multiple websites consecutively and actually collect the data it needed. Here they show that it scored 83.5% on the Web Voyager benchmark as a single agent, which is the highest we've ever seen. This benchmark tests agents' performance on end-to-end -end real world web tasks, which clearly this agent can handle as we just saw. So we've officially entered the AI agent era. These next couple of years are going to be absolutely insane. You can expect these AI agents to continue to improve rapidly and become capable of doing an ever-growing number of tasks on your computer. This is going to severely disrupt any work that's being done remotely or completely digitally, and also boost the productivity of any one single individual more than we've ever seen in human history. We're truly entering into some really interesting times. Now let's take a closer look at the Gemini 2.0 flash release, which is one of the things they showcase that you can actually test out right now. They state, Gemini 2.0 flash builds on the success of 1.5 flash, our most popular model yet for developers, with enhanced performance at similarly fast response times. No Notably, 2.0 Flash even outperforms 1.5 Pro on key benchmarks at twice the speed. 2.0 Flash also comes with new capabilities. In addition to supporting multimodal inputs like images, video, and audio, 2.0 Flash now supports multimodal output like natively generating images mixed with text and steerable text-to-speech multilingual audio. It can also natively call tools like Google Search, code execution, as well as third-party user-defined functions. Here are the full benchmarks. It's pretty much beating Gemini 1.5 Pro in every category and Keep in mind, this is their smallest model. They plan to roll out other model sizes in January. They also showed off a lot of cool applications for developers. In this demo, you can see the model's advanced spatial intelligence, which allows you to build interactive virtual environments. These are examples of what you can build with spatial understanding in Gemini 2.0. We introduced this capability in our 1.5 models, and we've advanced it even further with Gemini 2.0. This is a new tool in AI Studio, that makes it easier to explore spatial understanding with multimodal reasoning. For example, you can input this image and prompt it to give you the positions of the origami animals. This is a real-time recording, and notice how fast the results came back. That's because this is running on our new experimental Gemini 2.0 flash model, which enables advanced spatial understanding with low latency. You can see if the model can reason about which shadow belongs to which animal by asking for the fox's shadow. And the model finds it over here. Or ask it about the armadillo's shadow. It finds that too. Gemini 2.0 enables AI agents that can reason about the physical world. For example, you can give the model this photo and ask for the position of the spill. but then ask how it would clean it up with an explanation. And the model points out the towel over here. And with Gemini 2.0, we're introducing 3D spatial understanding. This is a preliminary capability still in early stages, so it won't be as accurate as 2D positions, but we're sharing it so that the developers can try it and give us feedback. Here's a Colab notebook that lets you prompt the model to give you 3D positions within photos. Then we visualize those positions in a top-down view, essentially turning the photo into an interactive floor plan. These are just a few examples of how you can build your own multimodal AI agents with Gemini 2.0. These models are getting really good at spatial understanding, which is not only incredible for use cases like these, but also holds significant potential for developing accurate world models and advancing the training of humanoid robots. There was one more quick demo here where they show its native tool use capabilities paired with real-time interaction. This is literally like just telling your computer to do things for you, and it actually does them. Take a look. These are examples of what you can build with native tool use in Gemini 2.0. Gemini 2.0 is natively built to use tools like code execution and Google search. Here's a demo that combines tool use with real-time interaction, built using the new Multimodal Live API. Make a bar graph that compares the runtime of The Godfather and Oppenheimer. Add the other two Godfathers to the graph. Pick three random superhero movies and add them to the graph. Notice how quickly the model responded. 
That's because this is powered by our new experimental Gemini 2.0 Flash model. It's able to search and code while you interact in real time. So yeah, I think these AI agents or AI assistants, whatever you want to call them, are soon going to become a big part of our everyday lives. I mean, if you can have an intelligent agent like this constantly observing your computer screen, providing you with insightful information at a moment's notice, and actually being able to complete tasks for you, then that's truly a game changer for so many reasons. As you'll see later in the video, these agents can also act as a sort of companion and even play games alongside you. But before we get into that, Gemini advanced users now have access to a new feature called Deep Research. They say here, Deep Research, your personal AI research assistant is here to help. Doing research online isn't always easy. Imagine you're a grad student preparing for your upcoming robotics presentation. You want to get smart on autonomous vehicle sensor trends and understand how different technologies stack up, along with what's on the horizon. A project like this might take hours of research and cross-referencing a sea of open tabs, that is if you can even find that link you know you put somewhere. Under your supervision, Deep Research does the hard work for you. After you enter your question, it creates a multi-step research plan for you to either revise or approve. Once to approve, it begins deeply analyzing relevant information from across the web on your behalf. Over the course of a few minutes, Gemini continuously refines its analysis, browsing the web the way you do, searching, finding interesting pieces of information, and then starting a new search based on what it's learned. It repeats this process multiple times and, once complete, generates a comprehensive report of the key findings which you can export into a Google Doc. It's neatly organized with links to the original sources, connecting you to relevant websites and businesses or organizations you might not have otherwise found, so you can easily dive deeper to learn more. And if you have any follow-up questions, you can simply ask the model. So this is definitely a feature I'm going to be using. Finally, there was one more thing I had to show you guys from this insane Google release. Literally all this stuff came out in just one day, by the way, which is insane. So here's a demo of an AI agent acting as an assistant and also kind of as a companion for this guy who's playing a mobile game. Hey, so I'm planning to go on an attack, uh, but first I need to train an army. So maybe you could recommend troop composition for my army. Based on your available troops and their quantity in the top left of the screen, we should train a mix of giants, barbarians, archers, and wizards. The focus should be on using giants to absorb damage, while wizards can take out high damage defenses, and barbarians and archers can deal with the weaker buildings. All right, um, that sounds good. To sell your crops, go to your roadside shop. You can set the price and amount you want to sell, then wait for buyers. Okay, can you help me find where the shop is? I, I see the multiple buildings here, I'm very confused. Your shop is the building with the awning towards the lower left corner of your screen. It has an icon like a stall with red and white stripes above it. This literally feels like a glimpse into the future. You can imagine that eventually these AI agents will be able to even play games with us in real time, just like you would with a human friend. If you thought the internet and social media has made people antisocial and lonely, just wait until everyone has one of these on their computer. It reminds me of the movie Her, where everyone becomes addicted to this new AI chatbot that you can converse with in real time, and spoiler alert, it doesn't end well. If anything, what we're seeing right now is probably even a step further than this. I mean, we already have advanced voice mode and AI that you can converse with in real time. This is AI that you can converse with, but that can also understand your screen and take actions. Think about what this could look like in a few years. AI companies are all just now starting to work on AI agents, given the recent breakthrough in these models' reasoning capabilities, thanks to the new scaling paradigm of test time compute. This is why everyone is calling 2025 the year of agents, and for good reason. 2025 will be a full year of all the major AI companies all heavily focusing on building capable AI agents. You can imagine the insane amount amounts of progress we will see, not only will this completely disrupt the labor market, especially digital and remote jobs, but this will also transform the way we interact with our devices on so many levels. I truly don't think people are ready for agents. So that was all the insane news from Google today. As you may have already seen, Google also recently made headlines for their breakthrough in the field of quantum mechanics with their new chip Willow. I already covered this in my last AI news video, but here's a quick recap if you haven't seen it. So they essentially made two major breakthroughs here, the first being that Willow can reduce errors exponentially as they scale up using more qubits, cracking a key challenge in quantum error correction that the field has pursued for almost 30 years. Essentially what this means is they discovered a way to scale up these quantum systems and increase performance exponentially. Sound familiar? The other major achievement they've made, Willow performed a standard benchmark computation in under 5 minutes that would take one of today's fastest supercomputers 10 septillion years, a number that vastly exceeds the age of the universe. So Google is back to say the least. I think after today, it's pretty clear that they are significantly ahead of OpenAI 
AI and at least building capable AI agents. I'm sure OpenAI has been working on agents behind the scenes, and I expect them to release at least a preview during their 12 days of shipments. Anyways, that's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.